Robert Stapleton was a Plymouth Bill member. He died last month. Um, sorry. Uh, those of you who have been with us in previous years would know he was a photographer. He worked in film for many years, and he was a very loyal member, so we miss him. Yes, thank you to, to Howard and to um, Joyce as well. So a big round of applause. Thank you. Uh, so with all of these filmmakers here, we would be amiss, and certainly we saw it with duplicity, to not showcase what Klamath can offer as a film location. So if you bear with us for just two minutes, we have a video that we would like to show you as to why you, as filmmakers, should consider making your next film here in Klamath. I'm James Ivory. I grew up in Klamath Falls. Hi, I'm Sky Borgman. I'm a filmmaker and I was raised in Klamath Falls. Though I've never shot a film here, I could imagine it would be a, a wonderful place to shoot a film in terms of, of the beauty of the surroundings. Klamath Falls in Southern Oregon is a great place to film. It's got everything you could possibly want for any genre of movie. I can see dramas there, I can see documentaries being filmed there, comedies. Pretty much any kind of landscape you want fits any mood you have. It's got rivers, it's got mountains, it's got plateaus, it's got small town, big city, you name it. Southern Oregon has it. If you were looking for a, a Western town, not the old fashioned Western kind of a cowboy movie, I don't mean that, but a Western town set in a spectacular location, uh, Klamath Falls would really do it. Whether it's a drama, a comedy, a documentary, as for the town, uh, downtown Klamath Falls is really sort of unchanged. Southern Oregon is a great place to film because there aren't a ton of films happening there, and so nobody's gotten really jaded from the film industry. Everybody's really welcoming and really happy to have people filming, which isn't always the case in Los Angeles and New York. So. You get a lot of people who are excited about you being there, and so that adds to just kind of the, the glory of the filmmaking process. Uh, it would be a, a terrific place to, to shoot. Come film in Southern Oregon.
Godspeed with Crafters Guild. Uh, they have meetings once a month. Um, and definitely encourage new members to go out and do it with every, so I'm excited to, to go to one. <laughs> so to get to know this group a little bit more, again, we have a very short video to introduce you to the Southern Casket Woodcrafters Guild. My name's Ed Selig. I'm a member of the Southern Cascades Woodcrafters Guild. Our members made the trophies for this year's festival winners. Wood is the primary focus of the guild, but we're also involved in many community projects. For the International Migratory Bird Day held in Veterans Park, we have work groups that prefab about 300 birdhouses for kids to build. The kids love it, the parents love it. We have built cabinets for Habitat for Humanity. At Christmas, we make toys for kids and gifts to those in senior care facilities. The purpose of the group is to share ideas and techniques about almost everything related to wood. We even go out into the community when somebody has a tree they want cut. We do it for the wood. A monthly meetings feature show and tell projects that members made or completed in the last month. We often have demonstrations of woodworking technique, which includes planning, building, sanding, or finishing. Members' interests vary, but include furniture making, carving, toy making, scroll saws, and lathe projects. I came to this group after buying a lathe over 20 years ago and not knowing how to use it. With the help of a number of members and club demonstrations, I did learn how to use the lathe and a lot more. I also learned carving scrolls, scroll saw, along with many other techniques. When we were first approached to make theme trophies for the festival winners, members took it up as a challenge. They watched the movies or trailers for inspiration and chose a theme to work on. The film festival makes the final choice for each category and we congratulate all the winners. So with that in mind, we should explain our judging process because it is a multi-tiered level to determine the films that we have seen this weekend and who our winners are. So we don't just take every single film. Uh, of, of course, we are an all-genre festival, and our criteria is that either the filmmaker has to be a resident of the state of Oregon or the film has to be made, at least primarily, in the state of Oregon. And we have a whole group of screeners that watch every single film submitted to us throughout the year. Uh, our submission window is February 1st to June 1st. And then once that's done, they watch every film, score it. We average out all those scores. And then the low scoring films get trimmed down. And then we have a whole second set of judges that come in and watch the remaining films. And we score all of those, average all of those. And then we have a selection committee that turns into about a six to seven hour long Zoom call typically to, to debate every single film on its merits and, and argue about what should get in, what shouldn't get in. It is a tedious process, but we wanna make sure that we do our due diligence that we present the best possible representation of filmmaking in Oregon that we possibly can. Then once we have the film selected, uh, we uh, send all of the selected films to three representatives who volunteer their time in the Hollywood film industry, so going outside of the state of Oregon, to watch all of the films, score all of the films, then we average those to determine who our winners are. This year, we have a Hollywood film producer and two Hollywood actors Sonia Hines, Terrence Hines, and Chairman Barnes, who served as our, as our judges. Chairman has been a judge for us for several years, and we're very gracious and appreciative for all of their time dedicated to watching that for free and um, giving their, their wonderful notes and making sure that we have the best of the best receiving our awards.
It's just so impressive the amount of time that they put into that and the amount of time uh, just taking those notes and and using their experience um, in the industry to really narrow it down. And um, again, all genre. I mean, there's so many different things to look at and score and really take into account. So, um, I mean, I I wish every film could get an award. <laughs> we, we, we thought about that. We didn't want it to be like participation ribbons, but uh, just being here, a, every single film and filmmaker are, are winners in our books. Yeah, absolutely. And we have um, fun little uh, other awards as well for, for participating filmmakers too. So uh, be sure to find me for other certificates as well. And we should note also, we did already announce one award earlier today um, because we also give a prize to the best film from the film camp that we teach every single summer. That was awarded to Hazel Heat Heaton for her film, parasomnia that we saw this morning yep long-term uh film camp attendee as well so yes. yeah good for hazel so one of our judges sent us a short little video to talk about what he looks for so this is chairman barnes chiming in about how he is a judge hello i'm chairman barnes i'm one of the judges in this year's klamath independent film festival uh, kurt has asked me to say a few words about what i look for when i'm evaluating the entries that are in competition so one of the first things that I look for is story. I think that's the, the, the cornerstone of good filmmaking is story. And uh, I like to, to have a story kind of put its hook into me uh, and kind of keep me guessing. It doesn't, something that doesn't lay everything out all at once, but something that, that kind of maybe parses things out and, and kind of pulls me along and keeps me guessing all along the way. Uh, that's always fun when I'm I'm watching a film. Uh, as far as um, visuals, uh, I think visuals are very important, especially in the the documentary category. Uh, those types of films tend to be very heavy on the interviews and the talking heads, uh, and I like it when the filmmaker is able to extrapolate on what is being said by the people being interviewed and represent that in a very exciting visual way. I think that that often helps the documentary uh, and getting its point across. Uh, alongside that, on the narrative side, uh, I like to look for a mood. Um, is the director or the filmmaker able to create a, a visual style uh, or, or, or signature that captures the mood of the genre or the, the script um, and carry that through consistently uh, throughout the film? Uh, I think that's probably one of the hardest things for a filmmaker to do is to establish mood uh, beyond just, you know, setting up the camera and capturing the action. So those are just a few of the things that I look for. Um, yeah, also, you know, technical things like audio, is the lighting good and whatnot. Uh, but uh, those, those I think, are the key components that I feel uh, I resonate strongest with me when I'm looking at films. So anyway... Um, I hope you've enjoyed viewing this year's entries in the competition as much as I have, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Congratulations to everyone who is uh, who is in competition tonight. Take care. So this year, we've always had six categories. So because we're made in Oregon, we split it regionally between northern and southern for K through college, which used to be K through twelve. We now expand to K through college. We have short films, which are under 40 minutes, and we have feature films, so six categories. But this year, Cassidy and our wonderful board decided that we need to add a seventh award. So in recognition of the great legacy of Oregon filmmaking, going back to the days of the silent movie era, the fact that the very first student film in history was shot here in Oregon, that the film considered to be the greatest comedy of all time. National and Prince Animal House was shot in, in Eugene. The great legacy of filmmaking, we thought it's appropriate that we establish a career legacy award by an Oregon filmmaker. Someone who has Oregon roots, who has had profound impact on the film industry. So we are going to introduce our seventh award that we will now be giving out on an annual basis. Raised in Klamath Falls, Oregon, the son of a lumber mill worker, James Ivory graduated from Klamath Union High School in 1946 and attended the University of Oregon to study architecture and art. 
Instead, his love of movies, born from attending films as a child in Klamath Falls across its many theaters that once lined downtown, including the Esquire Theater, known today as the Ross Ragland, persuaded James Ivory to instead pursue a career in film. He attended the USC Film School, where his thesis work earned attention in the New York Times as one of the 10 best non-theatrical films of the year in 1957. In 1961, Ivory would form Merchant Ivory Productions with Ishmael Merchant, a partnership that would last 44 years and garner some of the most critically acclaimed films in history until Merchant's death in 2005. With a penchant for international films set in India and also English literature, his work on acclaimed films like Howard's End, The Remains of the Day, The Guru, The City of Your Final Destination, and Room with a View has earned James Ivory nearly every prestigious film award imaginable, while directing celebrated Oscar-nominated performances by iconic actors like Vanessa Redgrave, Emma Thompson, Maggie Smith, Laura Linney, and Anthony Hopkins. Ivory has won more than 50 film awards in his career, and in 2018 became the oldest individual to ever win a BAFTA and Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay of Call Me By Your Name. James Ivory is the recipient of the Lawrence Medal, the University of Oregon's College of Design highest honor. And just a few blocks away from the Ross Raglan Theater at his alma mater, the Klamath Union High School Theater is named as the James Ivory Arts Center. Simply put, he is widely considered to be the most successful independent filmmaker of all time. Starting in 2023, the Klamath Independent Film Festival will present an annual award celebrating an individual with Oregon roots who has had a profound impact on film. With his unprecedented career and ties to Klamath Falls, Klamath Film is proud to announce that this Career Achievement Award shall henceforth be known as the James Ivory Award. And in its inaugural presentation is being awarded to Mr. James Ivory. I'm really touched that you made this award at the time of film festival uh, after me. Uh, I wish I was there with you. I did uh, I didn't like to present it, of course, to whoever wins. So. Thank you. I found it kind of hilarious that the most successful independent filmmaker of all time as an acceptance speech would send us such a tiny little cell phone video as an acceptance speech. He's still alive. He's lives. He's 94, 95 now, lives in upstate New York, and he's planning a trip to Europe in about two weeks. Uh, so uh, still in pretty good health. In fact, he still comes out to Klamath often. Uh, he has a cabin at Lake of the Woods, uh, which is just down the highway about half an hour. And uh, we've done several screenings with James, including here in this theater with Q&As. For all the amazing things he's done, he's still very proud to be from Klamath. Absolutely. And um, yeah, he was such a treat to be able to, you know, just correspond with and everything at, at his age, too. So maybe next year he will be down to be able to present the award to whoever wins. Maybe we, he'll be able we'd to love that. to have James Ivory presenting the award to whoever next year's winner is. So with all of that, we are going to begin with our K through college Northern Awards presentation. Sometimes it isn't. I understand the psychology of why the press wants it. It gets them, it gets them views. But at what cost? Maybe one out of every 1,000 arrests, it would be beneficial to public safety or police accountability to have the mugshots be public. But that does not justify 
the other 999 mugshots that will be published that day. This year, the Southern Cascade Woodcrafters Guild went all out and actually made multiple trophies for almost every single one of our awards. So uh, as you saw there, we actually have two awards. Sarah, if you would like to come down. Uh, in, by the way, our third place film, Endure, is uh, part of our online exclusive category. So for those of you saying, like, I don't remember seeing that one. We, in addition to everything we've seen this weekend, we have about 10 to 12 films that are also just online. Gorgeous award I could possibly imagine. This is amazing. And uh, thank you very much to the festival, to the woodworkers, and for everyone for being here uh, and participating. Um, this was a, a, a student piece that um, I frankly didn't have high hopes for. And uh, this is a, a very validating uh, uh, award for this particular piece and thank you very much and I I hope that if you didn't get a chance to see it that you will see it online thank you very much so wait wait a second uh, as I mentioned our wood crafters really went all out this year so there is that award that you get to keep and our alternate ones are most of them are going to go back to the wood crafters but we wanted you to at least get a chance to see and this was voted on by our board for which one we would give you, but at least see what you also had in the running for. This was made as a judge's desk with uh, <laughs> mug shots of cartoon characters all, all over it as, as an alternative for mug shots in the digital age. Wow, I love it, it's fantastic. Sarah, congratulations. Thank you so much for being here for the whole, whole festival. Congratulations. We will pass this back to the Woodcrafters. Our next category is Best Southern K through College Award. Thank you very much to the Klamath Independent Film Festival for selecting my film. Uh, also, thank you for this very special award. This is by far the most unique thing I've ever received. Um, also, thank you so much to my team back in Alberta for helping me make this film happen. And thanks to all of you who came out and gave it a watch. Weston is currently moving in for the start of uh, college, starting on Monday in Eugene. But he sent his best regards. He was, he was not able to join us. But we still want to show off the incredible trophies that the Southern Cascade Woodcrafters Guild made for this. So as alternates, they created this car that has items from the trunk, for those of you who saw the film, with a little street sign that says Memory Avenue on it. And the school bus and car that also has the actual street name 
on it as alternatives. Thank you to the Southern Cascade Woodcrafters Guild for, for their work. Our next category is Best Northern Oregon Short. I can still scramble around in the bottom of the boat until something prevents me from doing that. And then I guess it would be possible that, uh, that I'd go down to the Caribbean. And then for 25 years, I did both, shoe designing and baking. Marta lived and worked in Europe and Asia for decades. She was born in Oregon, and at a point, she and her husband My name is Zach Margolis. I'm the animator and director of An Evening with Father, and I am super honored to receive uh, this award for Best Northern Short. Um, I'd like to just thank really quick uh, Charlie Campbell, who did the music, um, my mom and my dad, uh, my houseies, and um, to, to you, the audience, for coming out to all these films. Um, I think I first came to the Klamath Independent Film Festival in 2018, immediately fell in love with it. I don't think there's another festival in Oregon that's like this. Uh, they're such a champion of um, Oregon film. And uh, I mean, they're a gift. They're, the inclusivity, the diversity of Oregon voices that they promote is, uh, it, it's a gift. Um, so uh, I love you, Kif. Um, I, I'd also, I feel like, um, well, here, let me. Yes, this is uh, what I wanted to show you. Um, I just had to turn the camera around. Um, thank you one million times to the Southern Cascade Woodcrafters Guild. This is the trophy they made, which is a sculptural representation of the primary set uh, in my film, which, as you can see here, is a filthy bathroom. And it's, um, it's as if they reached into my soul to find out what the best trophy would be. And then the, this is what came out. It's exquisite. Uh, thank you again to all of you, to Kif, and I will see you all next year. That is the alternate trophy that was made. That is the tooth that gets pulled out in the film and then gets wrapped in dental floss and comes to life. We, we have a, a large tooth on a pedestal. Also, I owe a massive, massive apology. Is, uh, are Jack and Tabitha still here? Uh, please come down. Yeah, come come on down from from our our Southern Oregon student category. Several of our filmmakers who finished in second and third place are here. So thank you so much for for taking the time to join us. So Jack Hannon here made the film Check Out, which is about a a sentient sea stand at Southern Oregon University that has a thirst for blood. Tabitha, uh, her very first film was The Lost Years of William Shakespeare. Um, anything that you'd like to say? Expecting this. Um, well, I'm super glad everyone liked the short film. This is the first film that I've ever submitted to a festival outside of my film school. So 
I'm super excited to see that it turned out well. And I'm super proud of the end product and proud of all of the people who helped me bring it to life. So thank you. Uh, thank you also for kind of the same reasons as Jack. And I just want to say that it's super fun to get to do this with friends, um, with Nathaniel too. And um, that's the best part of it. So. We have two categories left, best Northern feature and best Southern feature films. We will start with our best North. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. My brain is so gone at this point. I'm, I'm on like my, my, yeah. Um, the uh, individual here who lives with me can attest to how little sleep that, that or well, and Tommy can attest to it too, how little sleep we get in preparation for this event. So if I'm a little flighty and spacey, have a heart. Thank you. Um, our best Southern short award. I, I certainly don't want to miss that. Our best Southern short award. I'm always looking at the velocity. I'm looking at the area. Um, I'm estimating what kind of discharge I'm experiencing or seeing, and then being able to make predictions of what's going on upstream or downstream, stuff like that. There, as long as otters stop, screw with it. Yeah, okay. So the important thing is to reestablish the conditions that they need to come back in and be successful. Thank you. I didn't want to ask. I, I, I know, Mom. I know. Uh, is anyone from, uh, no one from Bridging the Gap or Unrestricted Flow is here to join us? No? Yes, thank you. I, I, I've already screwed up enough things in this. Ray, you've been coming to our festival for how many years now? And I believe this is the first time that you've won an award with us, correct? It's production manager on The Settling, which won a number of years ago. I, I don't know how long ago that was. But uh, anyway, thank you very much. I, I love this film festival, as, as, as they know. Uh, it's so great to come over here. I have a long history, honestly, with Klamath Falls, with Klamath County. When I first moved here from, from the Montana area and started working for KTVL Channel 10, uh, they said, you're from Montana. You know how to drive in the snow. You're our Klamath Falls guy. So when they needed anything shot over in Klamath Falls, I was the one that came over. So I've shot a lot of things. I've shot a lot of events in this theater itself. So I've been around a while, as you, maybe as you can tell. Anyway, uh, I, I am meeting, for those of you who did see the film, uh, Marlon Mason. You know, she is incredible. And I'm having wine with wine tasting with her tomorrow evening. And I'm going to bring this to sit on the table at the winery. <laughs> so it'll be a fun evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. And one thing I'd just like to point out about that um, trophy, Ray, is it's the, the teacups that are shown in the, in the film, um, and one is filled with tea and one is not. So it's those small touches I got to see Bill um, in his workshop making that trophy, and it was really special. So yeah, congratulations, Ray, and congratulations, Bill, on a beautiful piece of work. Okay, now we can get to our feature film selections, starting with our best Northern feature film. That I'm someone who's organized and has their shit together and can get the job done, okay? So that means that in this moment, 
I have to go in there alone. So you have to pretend like you don't have us? The more times a fish encounters a powerhouse side of a dam and passing that, uh, the lower survival rate it has. Juvenile bypass systems have been built at each one of the dams, lower granite included, uh, that use screens and shunt the juveniles away from the turbine entrances and then through a series of pipes and canals around the dam. Hi, I'm Reed. I'm the director of Sam Now, and I just want to thank everyone at Klamath for this amazing award. This is so cool to get this recognition. I'm from Oregon. I wish I could be there. Um, this is just really exciting for me and my team. And unfortunately, the physical award, which was handcrafted by the Southern Cascade Woodworkers Guild, um, was sent to our editors in Seattle and not to my address. So I don't have it with me, but I'm going to share a clip with, uh, with my editor, Darren Lund. Um, thank you again. This is a tremendous honor and I hope everyone has a really great night. Action. Hey, Klamath Film Festival. My name is Darren Lund, one of the editors of Sam Now, and uh, just want to say thank you very much for the Best Northern Feature Award. Really appreciate it. So all of our submissions come through a website called Film Freeway that uh, the filmmakers in here are familiar with that allows them to put in details about the film and contact information and all background and tech specs. And we mailed the awards to the addresses that they listed on Film Freeway. So uh, Reed is going to get his trophy. He just needs to go pick it up from Seattle. And the wonderful Woodcrafters also made this amazing puppeteer trophy um for those who missed sam now it is a film about two brothers whose mom abandoned them and started a new life and uh they go on an adventure to try to find her and, and try to mend that so this is the mom character and the older brother cutting the strings of the puppet uh which would be the younger brother who created a superhero alter ego so thank you woodcrafters for making this incredible trophy as well We are now down to our final award of three days of celebrating the best in Oregon filmmaking. Uh, our audience has seen some of the best films made in this state over the past year and every single filmmaker um, we just have the most utmost respect for and love and appreciation. Um, but like Highlander, there can only be one. Uh, so our judges uh, painstakingly went through our Southern uh, feature films, and here are their selections. Mom hated Wolf so much. You know, I find comedy funny in the way that it's like dancing. I don't know how to do either. We never really joked around in my house anyways. Wolf's the only reason I started this whole gig. So California gulls, eared grebes, they're also eating a lot of flies. It's not like a fowler ope can't go to a freshwater wetland and find prey to eat. They can eat other invertebrates in those kind of places.
One of the most scariest things was that I was gonna be put in a situation where people were gonna be asking me questions again about my past. I was 33, a decade older than my classmates, and had lived a very different life, one that I wasn't ready to share with the other students in my program. I'm Mike and Akira, uh, our third place winners, uh, had to leave back for Eugene earlier, but we did give them their, their uh, jury uh, second runner-up certificates before they left and congratulated them. Is Kevin still here? Um, okay. okay, Kevin, come on down. <laughs> we showed Kevin's feature film, uh, Killing Lake Abert, earlier today, a wonderful documentary about a lake that's about 100 miles east of us over in Lake County. Kevin, congratulations, sir, and thank you for joining us at the Climate Independent Film Festival. Now, Kev, before you go, in, anything you'd like to say? Thanks a lot for having me. I really hope you enjoyed the film and uh hope you appreciate all the natural beauty you have around here and thanks to the film folks here who put in i can only imagine the thousands of hours that they put in and i understand how much work goes into that i really appreciate it so thanks for having me all right beautiful i'm gonna also shout out your beautiful family thank you so much for coming y'all and being a part of this experience yeah we had to convince our winner to stay an extra day they were going to leave after their screening yesterday um and i also had to apologize to our audience yesterday because space open charity was probably the most tear-jerking film we had this year uh normally we we put a little warning before our films of if there's going to be nudity or extreme violence and we should have said do not watch this film without tissues so my apologies to everyone sandy thank you for joining us here thank you for sharing your wonderful film with us and we actually have a second award that we want you to give to charity so uh, for those of you who missed Space Hope and Charity, it is the story of a woman from Canyonville who endures just one tragedy after another, including witnessing her husband and young child drown in front of her. And uh, she now works for NASA. So she earned her master's degree at the University of Oregon, or sorry, at University of Arizona after graduating from University of Oregon. So uh, working on her PhD to hopefully become an astronaut. So with all that she has overcome, uh, not only is your award the Northern Hemisphere Constellations, but the additional award that they made is a telescope observatory with charity, and there are footsteps leading into the water and up. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. I'm just so touched by this I thought maybe we were considered northern so I thought was a little disappointed I thought we didn't win <laughs> but um really Kurt and Cassidy you guys have just been amazing so thank you for your passion for film and for your compassion because you both I know it's a ton of work to pull this off and you two both have just been gracious and attentive and wonderful and thanks to the audience. And especially, I am so appreciative of Charity Woodrum for letting me into her life. She had been through so much. And so for her to trust again was huge. And I'm just so grateful that she allowed me to share her story and that she feels good about it now. So thanks to her, I will be very happy to send that to her. Actually, I'll see her in Bend in a few weeks. So I will give it to her in person. So thank you so much. An enormous thank you to the Southern Cascade Woodcrafters Guild again for making all of our wonderful trophies. And our winners are also walking away with uh, a nice big check as well as certificates. Um, 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for, gentlemen, for being, man, my brain is so fried, um, <laughs> for joining us for the 2023 Klamath Independent Film Festival. We would love to have all of our filmmakers who are in the, the house to come down on the stage for a group photo. But we so appreciate everyone for joining us for three days of the best films made in Oregon. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.